Okay. Okay, so I don't have my regular mic, so I'll try to shout as much as possible. Um, so we've spent already two lectures on steady state diffusion. Very important process in biological systems, in environmental systems, and basically in many systems. And um, so in steady state, what we did was without any reaction, just simple uh, slab. or a cylindrical shell, we did that. Or we did a you know, combination of them, like two layers, like that. But either way, there was no reaction. The component that was diffusing was not uh, being used up by something, or none of that was being generated. So today, we're going to talk about when there is a reaction present, which I want you to think in terms of the heat transfer. This is like with heat generation. So this is like with mass generation. Now, how does mass get generated? It's, um, you have to have some reaction that generates that species. And more often, we're talking about depletion, meaning a negative uh, generation. That's the problem we're going to do. And so for those, when you have generation in there, this resistance formulation does not work. So we have to start from scratch. But as we do always, we, uh, let's look at some examples. So I'm sure you know, you're juniors, and so by now you probably do some cooking somewhere, right? So this is a, um, just a, a regular uh, pan here. Can you see this? Yeah. And, and so you know, whether you did cooking or not, you know that, um, like for example, here at the base, it's kind of hot, right? It's very hot. But at the end, it's probably not that hot. You see, I, I can hold it here. Okay? But I can't hold it there. It's, it's really hot. Okay? So however way this pan is being heated, the base is at some temperature. Why is it cooler here? Would it stay cooler, or is it just because I, I started uh, this you know, 10 minutes before you uh, came in? And maybe if I leave it long enough, this will also get just as hot as the base. Is that true? Would this end get, become uh, just as hot as the base? It's a matter of time. Probably not. So, so then this might stay cooler all the time from here. So, it, so the process reaches a steady state. When you said, that yes, given time, it will still be, this place still is cooler than the base. So that means if it doesn't change with time, it reaches a steady state. So at steady state, then it's hot and it's cold here. Any quick answer as to why? Convection. Convection? OK, who said that? Yeah. Can you say a little bit? Maybe. The air cools it. So why? So the air cools it. How does it get from hot to cold? Is it suddenly hot here and cold here? It'll be some sort of progressive thing, right? So heat is being conducted in the, the metal handle. But as it's conducted, simultaneously, it's being released to the surroundings, to the environment. Everybody with me? So what are the two processes going on here? Conduction along the, um, uh, the, the handle, but simultaneous loss of heat to the surroundings. OK? Are you with me? So conduction plus loss. 
why am I talking about conduction? I thought you were done with prelim one and two. You know, heat transfer is over, right? Why are we still talking about that? It's because uh, we need to bring that as an analogy. So come to something that seems quite different than heating a pan, of, um, a pan on a, a cooking, uh, on, a, on a heater. This is drug wafers that have been implanted into, uh, in this case, uh, brain tissue. And the reason for implanting, many of you know a lot more than I do, it's because the systemic delivery that may not work all the time, so you implant the drug, and then so this wafer, these wafers they have the active component in there. So those active components would diffuse into the tissue. Everybody with me? Because high concentration here, low concentration, it'll diffuse into the tissue. But would it just diffuse? It'll also get metabolized. That's what you are after. You are trying to deliver the drug. Is everybody with me? So what is the process here? Diffusion plus elimination plus loss. What similarity does it have with this one? By the way, this is the infrared picture of the same pan. OK? So the base is hot. And as you go along, then it's colder. And here, if you make this pan long enough, then the end would pretty much be at the air temperature. OK? So it's conduction plus loss, diffusion plus loss okay, in the domain. Do you see the analogy? That's the only reason we are talking about this. Okay? So let's bring more examples. Okay? So another one is this is the bottom of a leaf. So this is the stomata. And uh, the photosynthesis process involves diffusion of carbon dioxide from inside where there's more carbon dioxide, it diffuses through, but it also then goes through the reaction in photosynthesis. So the carbon dioxide is not just diffusing, it's also getting eliminated. Does everybody hear that? So there's two things going on, diffusion with elimination. Again, the analogy is conduction plus elimination. OK? More examples, OK? So um, heat transfer, we don't have to just talk about this cooking pan, OK? So let's bring some bio example. So African elephants, they do not have sweat glands. And of course, a big elephant generates a lot of metabolic heat that has to be gotten rid of. So they use the pinna, the this large ear just having a lot of surface area as the way to reject heat. So then what's going on here? The base of the pinna, everybody with me? The base of the pinna here is more or less at the body temperature, OK? And so the heat conducts along uh, the pinna, but it's also lost to the surrounding. No different from the pan, where the base is at pan temperature, but as the heat conducts, it loses to, um, heat to the surrounding. Okay, and no different from the plant problem that we said that carbon dioxide diffuses, and it's also being eliminated. Diffusion plus reaction. Okay. So, uh, so that's the problem we want to solve. Before we get there, I want to do one more um, example or, or one more discussion. This problem actually is not uh, trivial. For example, if I say the heat loss from the, from the elephant, uh, pinna, is H times area of the ear times T 
minus t infinity, t infinity is surrounding air, and t is the uh, area, the, the body temperature, or the, the pinna temperature, okay? Can I write this uh, to say how much heat is being lost? Maybe I, uh, by A, I mean area of both sides, okay? And we would also have to double it for two years. Okay. So all we need to do is, and it, all we need to do is know H. But I'm saying uh, th there's some problem with this. And, and to, el to elaborate that problem, let's look at one more example. So those of you who are from the northern climates and not, not from deep south, uh, you have seen uh, this kind of um, thing at, at home or, or at, at work and so on. These are, this is how the rooms are heated, right? So the hot water runs through the pipe and then uh, it maintains the, this, uh, the, the tube at the hot water temperature and then uh, it dissipates heat through these areas, right? So how much heat is dissipated is again H times area times T minus T infinity. So a quick question, I want more heat in the room, so all I need is bigger fins. Like if I double, triple the area, would I get three times as much heat? Did everybody hear the question? So given the same water flowing and the heat is lost from these areas, if I Three, if I triple the area, would I get three times the heat? Some of you think yes. So, so anybody thinks yes? Uh, so is our equation wrong then? So just like this, the one I wrote was not for this fin, but for this fin. This is a biological fin. So if the fin area uh, doubles, let's say from the baby to the, the, uh, the bigger uh, elephant, would, would the heat loss double? In this one, it is the heat loss we're after. That's what goes into the room. So I was asking earlier, if I double the area, would I really get twice as much heat out? Any comments, anybody? Just, no? What is the problem? Some of you said no. Why do you think we will not get twice as much heat out? Yeah. So what is the meaning of using this equation? Everybody here. It says H times area times T of the pinna or T of the fin here minus T infinity, right? If you do twice as big an area, is the temperature everywhere on the metal going to be same as the uh, hot water flowing through? Because it's dropping, right? So as you do twice as much area, after a while, all that area is going to be pretty much at room temperature. So the same way here, these ends are pretty much at the surrounding temperature. So this problem is more complicated than just by knowing H and the temperature, because the temperature is actually varying. Does everybody get that? That is the main reason I'm even bringing up this example, that the temperature at the base is known, but it's varying all the way. So you cannot just use T minus T infinity. Okay. So now it's time for, for some questions. Okay. So let me go back to let me go back to the previous one. So think of this diffusion. It's, we're talking 1D, so it's like a slab here. So there's diffusion of CO2, 
but simultaneously CO2 is being used up, right? So I want to do this diffusion in a slab with reaction. So think of a slab, our good old slab, as we always uh, think of the simpler. One side is higher concentration, like outside, which is higher CO2 concentration, and then inside, it could be zero or lower concentration, okay? So there is diffusion, except we're not going to do just diffusion because the examples I showed, there's always diffusion and some reaction, something that is losing the material, okay? So the question to you is, in contrast with the slab with no reaction, if I have a slab with reaction, so as the stuff is moving, it's also being used up, it's being consumed, is the concentration profile still linear, and does the flux at surface uh, increase or decrease? This is what we will solve, but it would be nice to get some intuition before we actually dig in the details, okay? So two minutes, thank you. So how do we get started? How about, can I? Start on the third row, how about you? Um, Do the, the first one, yeah. We didn't take it anymore, because I guess like, we did take into account the fact that it depends on what the rate of the degradation is, like if it's constant or So let's say it has some rate, you know, small or, so we're not talking about how much it will deviate from linear, but would it still be linear? We said no. We said no, but can you give a little bit more physical explanation? Yeah. So, so as it's diffusing, it's also being used up. And so if it is being used up, then it will be, like it was said, it, was, it would be lower concentration. And, and so uh, the thing is, let's get back to what was meaning of our steady state. Steady state, meaning the, this, um, it, when there's no reaction, if you take two regions, then the s same amount coming in has to go out, right? Because mass is not being consumed. But when you have reaction, if you take, think of two different uh, you know, uh, stops or, or you know, left end or right end, the amount coming in would not be the amount going out because some of some of it got used up in the middle, right? Does that make sense? So then it cannot be, the slope cannot be the same. The next, uh, next person, can you say, what, what happens to the flux then? So can we talk about this a little? So uh, concentration, does concentration at a point really determine the flux? Th this is a good question. We should talk about it. So if I know, let's say I know concentration here. And this is x, and, and this is c. I know the concentration here. Do I know the flux? Do I have? any clue about the flux. Because flux has to do with how this thing changes with position, right? Because flux is minus d, d, c, d, x. Do, do you uh, see that? So the, so the flux, the, this is something we do all the time, that we uh, kind of think of the concentration and, and the flux in, in a, a probably similar way, but Flux is the derivative. Flux has to do with the derivative. So it's how the concentration changes. So can we go, go back to this? How the, how the concentration changes from the surface to the inside, does it stay the same when there is a reaction? What, what's going to happen? At every place, it's going to be higher or lower? because it's being used up. 
it's going to be lower. So if the concentration, so by definition, your boundary condition, this point is the same. This doesn't change, but then inside is lower. Is everybody with me? What does that do to the gradient? The gradient, the, the gradient, uh, it, it looks that way. The, the gradient increases because it's a bigger change. Yeah, I, I know what you're thinking, yeah. Okay, so the gradient increases. Does everybody get that? Because it, it's, it stays high here, but here you are reducing, so the change is more over the same distance. So the gradient increases, so the flux increases. We already know, then, what we are going to get. We can stop here, right? But let's do the details now, OK? Um, so the governing equation, we always start from the same governing equation. And then what terms we, uh, should we be dropping? What terms should we be dropping now? What, what are the physics in our problem? It's diffusion. It's diffusion with reaction or consumption or whatever, right? So what term carries that? It's this guy. Actually, I already put in there. It's a first order reaction. So remember, everything we derive today is for the first order. If you change the order, it will be a different solution. OK, um, so think of this problem then, just like the slab that we did before. The stuff is diffusing. So you can think of this is the drug diffusing and metabolizing, or carbon dioxide diffusing and being used up. So at some point, there will be nothing left. So that is my other end or the other boundary, not this physical boundary. OK? So that's the problem we're doing. Because it's being used up, if you give it enough thickness, it's going to get to 0. OK? So at x equal to L, Ca equal to 0, and x equal to 0, Ca is Ca0. So those two terms are gone, and I have this one as my governing equation, and, uh, and here are the boundary conditions. OK? So, so the solution to this, OK? What kind of a solution do you think we have? Uh, let me rewrite that equation. We don't have to write del, because there's only one variable. t is gone. So I can write d square c a d x square, OK? Is, is equal to some m square c a, where m square is k double prime over d. Okay? Why can I write m square? Because k double prime is positive. Because in, it is first order, and I already used up the negative. So the rate constant, this part of it has to be positive. Diffusivity is positive. So this ratio is positive. So I can write it as m square. So what kind of solution do you think it has that you differentiate twice, you get the same function? What kind? If you do sine or cosine, then if you do twice, then you sine to cosine, and then cosine to negative sine, right? So then the other one is exponential. So then Ca is equal to some constant times e raised to um, mx, OK? So that would work, right? If you differentiate twice. Is everybody with me? How about minus mx? Would that work? That will also work. So which one do I choose? Anybody remembers how we do these things? Both, both will work here. Anybody? No? You? You? 
minus would work, but then plus would also work. Okay? So what, how we solve these way back when you did these things is we, we will take both. Were you going to say that? Yeah, so one trouble is if we just have one term, I can find K1 using the boundary condition, but I have two boundary conditions. So there's some issue there. So because. So let's go for the two, yeah. So let's go for the two solutions, okay? So this guy is a solution, but so is this guy. So let's not try to discriminate. We keep both of them. OK? So CA is equal to this, and you find K1 and K2 using the boundary conditions. So let's do that. CA, can you help me here? CA is CA0 using the first uh, BC is equal to at x equal to 0. So K1 plus K2, is that OK, everybody? And the second one is C at x equal to uh, L, concentration is 0, and K1 e raised to minus ML plus K2 e raised to plus ML. Two algebraic equations, we can find K1 and K2. OK? So I do you a favor that I'm not going to do that, that part of the algebra, which is nothing but finding K1 and K2. Once you do that, this is the solution you get. Yeah? Is M just a variable? No, M is this. This, this is. Right, but it doesn't have like a physical significance per se. It's not mass or anything. It's just like. It actually, you can. Sing, uh, we, OK, let's um, maybe uh, in about. Five minutes, we can talk about the physical significance. We, we can give physical significance to it. But we're just using it to substitute here, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, that, that's all. So m is square root of this thing. That's all. I'm just, you know, it's less clumsy. Let's, let's just say it that way, OK? But m, we can give some significance to it. OK, is everybody with me? So we can do this, and we can get the solution. And maybe now is as good a time. The other guy, the heat transfer, OK? Now you must be wondering, what about if that problem is analogous, what is the governing equation boundary condition for that one? Should we at least write that, just so we convince ourselves? So if I do the heat transfer problem, can you help me? Heat transfer problem, 1D. Right? That's my heat equation. If I want to apply that heat equation, in this part, okay, just the fin, just the handle. So we have some base temperature here, heat conducts, and it's getting lost. Are you with me? Okay. So how do I write that? Do I, first of all, I'm doing a steady state. So this goes. Is there convection inside the metal? Inside the metal, I'm doing the, okay. So this is 0. So then this thing, my solution, is, my governing equation is k d squared t dx squared plus q. What is q in this? Can you help me find this? Because it's metal, it's very thermally conducting. So you can think of that through the thickness, if you think of a cross-section area, there's only one temperature. So whatever is the surface temperature, that's the inside temperature. But the surface temperature varies this way. OK? So how much heat is lost? If I think of, it's still kind of hot in here. So if you think of, uh, this is my 
pan. OK? So if I think of a region delta x, OK, how much heat is lost through that region? You have to be able to say this. I, I know the temperature. Temperature is T. How much heat is lost through the periphery in that area? Prelim 2 was last week. Heat is lost by convection. So how much heat is lost? <coughs> through this air, I can't hold it. To, OK, so through a section, how much heat is lost? I give you the temperature. Matt, you want to try? H times T minus T infinity. Is everybody with me? Times the area. So how do I write area? If I think of P as perimeter, then P delta X would be area. Is that one way to write? P is the perimeter. It's the length, OK? Times the thickness. Is everybody with me? Don't just take down the um, expression. OK? But what is normally the unit for Q? It's watts per meter cube. This is in watts. So how do I get to watts per meter cube? What is the meter cube over which it's happening? The volume is area, the cross-sectional area now. So this is, I'll put a C in there. Cross-sectional area times delta x. Is everybody with me on that? So this is equal to HP T minus T infinity over AC. So my governing equation is K <laughs> plus Q. So is the Q plus or minus? Come on. Minus, it's losing heat. So this is equal to 0. If I divide it by k, then this is equal to 0. And let's just write theta equal to t minus t infinity, just so that it looks neater. So then d square theta dx square minus hp over kac theta equal to 0. That's my governing equation for heat transfer for this handle or for the fin, or for this guy. From here, x is the distance, OK? Is that equation different from what we have here? The, are they different? It's something equal to something times the, uh, the derivative or second derivative of something is equal to a constant times that thing. Second derivative of temperature is equal to is equal to something times the temperature. It's exactly the same, right? So the solution would also be the same. OK, so now let's move on with the solution. M is square. Um, this one is kind of hard to play with. It's so, as a sort of a um, extreme case, or as, a, a, as an approximation, if I think of this L, when this L is long, then this expression, you can simplify as this. So your solution, when L is long, is nothing but an exponential. So let's look at it a little more detail. So now I have plotted the, that solution, OK? I've plotted it for two conditions. So this is when you can give some interpretation, um, uh, gave um, the, some interpretation to M, OK? So I have plotted the solution for two values of m. 
So m is given by this, two values of m meaning in one, the k prime is twice as much. What is the meaning of k to prime? It's, it's being metabolized twice as fast, or the reaction rate constant for metabolism is twice as fast. Is, is everybody with me on this? OK. So what happens is if you, instead of 0.5 per hour, it's 1 per hour. So if it is being metabolized twice as fast, then the concentration is going to drop even faster, right? No? No? Our solution is, this is my M, and the solution is CA over CA0 is equal to E raised to minus MX. Higher the M, faster is the decay. Right? So you increase the reaction rate constant, and it drops faster. OK? So then there are two things that's happening. Concentration is changing, and the flux will also be different. So instead of me shouting some more, I would like you to tell me what would be the implication of these two. The fact that concentration is at concentration versus distance is changing, and the flux is changing. And so I try to superimpose this, uh, this drug delivery. By the way, this is for real data. This is not fictitious. This is for uh, steady state dopamine diffusion from uh, Professor Salzman's paper, who was uh, on our faculty years ago, but before you came. He's, uh, he's at Yale now. Does anybody know? OK. Um, so this is from his paper. So these are real data. This is what people use. And so this is my drug wafer. And it's diffusing into the tissue, but it's also being metabolized. So what are the implications of these two things changing as I change M? So M could be changed by uh, the changing of the reaction rate. So M could be changed by increase of the rate constant or decrease of diffusivity. Either one, combination. Okay? So what are the implications? Two minutes. OK? Enough of the discussion. How about you there? Uh, yeah? Can you start the first one? So concentration changes uh, differently at a distance, right? And you know, we're talking, we're contrasting this one with this one. So what would be the implication of drug delivery? I'm sorry, what was the last sentence? There, it wouldn't affect concentration at a large distance? It would not affect concentration at large distance, but this, uh, th that's true, you know, because down here it's very small anyway. But from a drug delivery standpoint, are these the, are these the regions you care for when there, there isn't much of a drug, right? You want to deliver the drug, so you want some higher concentration, right? So you're interested more in these regions, right? So what's happening in those regions? Well, in those regions, um, in shorter distances, and the concentration is affected. Yeah. So the concentration is affected, and what's happening is it is lower, right? And, and so can somebody add to this? What, what would be a very practical uh, issue with this uh, concentration decaying faster and becoming almost zero sooner, distance-wise. Yeah? So then, so if we are trying to treat this region, let's say we I pick a region here. So now with the with this higher rate constant, it drops to pretty much zero even fast, even earlier, right? So you cannot treat as much of a distance. 
this is a real issue, then you have to have multiple implant, for example. OK? But the next person, can, can we talk about the flux? Yeah. Uh, the flux, flux So flux increases because now you have a bigger change of concentration over the, the same distance, so the flux increases. And so what does that mean to this application? It, it will be consumed faster, so if, if you are interested in a particular rate of delivery, it's going to be faster, it's going to be depleted faster, and it will be done. And maybe that's what you want, but maybe that's what you don't want, but this is going to happen. So I want you to see that the net result, uh, you know, whatever happens, it's a combination of two things. One is how fast the reaction is happening, and the other is how fast it is diffusing. Okay? These two are acting against each other. Okay? And um, about this flux being greater than, uh, than the normal, I don't want you to take my word for it, okay? So let's make sure that we actually um, can prove that the flux is indeed higher. So far, I have only said looking at the plot, right? But we can show this, that the flux is actually higher. Is everybody with me? We want to show that the flux, when there is a reaction, like here, that the flux is higher. We want to show that conclusively, algebraically. So when you have a slab without any reaction, this is the flux, right? Without a reaction, high, low, my flux is minus d, 0, minus d, dc, dx. Everybody with me, right? This is my flux. Flux, for this case, would be this dca dx at x equal to 0. So that big long expression that we have at the solution, you take the derivative and plug in x equal to 0. You want me to do that? No. So if you do that, you get this expression. OK? So what is it I have to prove? In order, in order to prove that this is higher than this, look, this part is the same. So what do I have to prove? This part is greater than 1. So let's try to do that. So that part, so let's talk about two extremes when ML is much less than 1 and ML is much greater than 1. Okay? So if it is much greater than 1, if ML is very large, what happens to these two terms? They disappear, so then I only have these two, so their ratio is 1. So when ML, then the term is equal to ML. It's just this part that remains. And by definition, since you are saying ML is greater than 1, if this term remains, then the value is greater than 1. OK? Are you with me? How about the other one? Can you help? When this is small, you remember we could approximate e to the something as like a Taylor series. So we can write ML times 1 plus ML, right? When ML is small, and then I can write that one as 1 minus ML divided by, again, 1 plus ML, sorry, plus 1 minus M, yeah, minus 1 plus ML. Are you with me? So then this cancels, and so you get these two cancel, so you get 2 over 2 ml times ml, then this is approximately 2, right? 2 over 2 ml, sorry, 2 over, no, approximately equal to 1, OK? 2 over 2 ml is 1 over ml times ml is, is 1, OK? So then whether in the high limit or lower limit, 
it's always going to be more than one. Because if you just take this expression, this, is always, this part is always higher than one. Why? Because it's same as e to the 2 ml um, plus 1 over e to the 2 ml minus 1. Something plus something divided by something minus something, this ratio is always greater than 1. OK? So this is, so then what I proved is this thing is always greater than 1, which means the flux is always higher, which we intuitively guessed, right? That's very important. We, we guessed it. OK, so to summarize then, what we just did was with reaction for a single slab, and that too for a first order reaction. Because uh, this term, I don't have any more, the, the generation term was written as minus k double prime ca. This is the term that we had for elimination of the drug, so that's first order reaction. If you want to do for zeroth order reaction, you have to redo the derivation. It's a totally different solution. And then we didn't do multiple slabs. It's possible to think of, let's say this is my drug, and this is tissue one, and then another layer, tissue two, where the degradation is different, right? We're not doing those problems because those are done much easier numerically. And they don't give any more insight. So we're not doing multiple slab. So looking at the entire picture uh, of, the, of this chapter then, without reaction, we did single slab that we derived. Slab, and we could derive for cylinder and sphere. And then when you have multiple slabs, we basically are thinking of resistance formulation. And then when you have slab with reaction, it's going to be from scratch. And so the last slide, we just want to say, uh, again, the, what we did in this chapter, without reaction and with reaction, we calculated concentration and flux, concentration and flux. And we could do that for slab cylinder sphere. We could, but we didn't do all the cases. So for slab, concentration is linear, flux is constant. With reaction, it's not linear. Everybody hear that? With reaction, it's not a linear concentration profile. Um, but we derived only for the first order and then the flux increases at the surface. Then we did for cylinder and sphere, again, concentration is not going to be linear. Think of the heat transfer case. Temperature is not linear in a cylinder or a spherical um, shell, okay? And, and so all of these, when you get to the problems, just think of what we did for heat transfer. That is the best way to remember, because they're exactly identical. Okay, So that concludes the steady state mass transfer. Thank you.